you're about to watch a clip from the Video Maker Podcast. To watch or listen to the full episode, click the link in the description. So let's just talk about a couple of um, specs, I guess, to consider with your file formats when you're making these changes. Because in some cases, you may do a transcode from one format to another and take a pretty serious quality hit, yeah. maybe without noticing, right? So um, one of the big ones is bit depth, or I'm sorry, bit, bit rate. We'll start with bit rate. So bit rate is um, the amount of data it takes to, um, to encode um, a particular piece of video, and it's usually measured in you know seconds. Megabytes or megabits per second. Yeah, megabits per second. Me megabytes per Mega second. Megabytes are big files. Megabits are eight times smaller. So uh, always a bit is eighth of a byte. Yeah, and, and generally the rule of thumb, though not always, is the, the bigger the bit rate, the higher quality file it is. Not always, um, but often that's the case. So if you're taking a, um, you know, an 800 megabit file and converting it into a 100 megabit file, um, then you can expect some sort of quality loss. Yeah, it's you're not going to be able to keep. I mean, even the most efficient compression uh, is not going to be able to save you, uh, you know, that much space. Uh, in fact, a lot of them aren't they're they're efficient in the way they they capture but maybe not how they decode well yeah. like we do with the h265 yep um yep. uh the, the other one which i just sort of accidentally got into a bit depth <laughs> is the color space yeah right so that's a really real killer right if you start with a 10-bit um file that as chris mentioned has billions of colors in it um and you drop to an 8-bit file which now is down to millions of colors like that's a lot of color data that just goes away yeah and let's put this practically right so if you have a gradient from uh, one color to the next the more colors you have the more smooth that gradient is so the more smooth the color transformation from one to another is so in you're going to have more color to actually play with and as well as you'll be able to have a uh, very minor uh, nuance between colors instead of the idea that uh, you know we're, we're compressing it into a uh, say eight bit you're making all those lots of colors into a smaller package right. now is eight bit bad no because uh we've been using it for a long time but it's not going to give you uh, as much leeway in um your post-production so if you need to change it um affect it in any way those things are going to degrade easier in post-production so think of the bigger the bit depth the more the colors um i think right now we're only talking about 8 10 and 12 in the video world mm -hmm. and 10 bit is where hdr exists so HDR starts at 10-bit um, and needs to be, um, and that's really like the, the the baseline for that. Not that that really matters in what we're talking about, but that's usually where you see it. And then 12 bits where you're finding in RAW. When people are talking about RAW, typically RAW is a 12-bit format or greater. And the dangerous thing here is um, is you could get into this um, this, I guess, practice of encoding or transcoding your files and then like watching them to see is the difference really noticeable. Like I would do that all the time. I would look at the original file, then I would transcode it, look at the transcoded file and go, oh, this is half the file size. And it, uh, to my eye, it looks about the same. Right. Um, but in a lot of cases, people are using 8-bit monitors. Like that, I believe that's the most common um, bit depth monitor that you can get. So your your 8-bit monitor can display 16.7 um, million colors. And so you see an, uh, a nice gradient uh, if, if you're looking at the color spectrum there. Um, and uh, But if you're looking at a 10-bit image on an 8-bit monitor versus an 8-bit image on an 8-bit monitor, the same image otherwise other than the bit depth, they're going to look identical until you pull it up on a 10-bit monitor. And then suddenly your 8-bit uh, picture is going to look kind of like blotchy compared to the 10-bit, yep. which has uh, a billion colors. Um, and then obviously the next step up to 12-bit, I don't know if there's 12-bit monitors, but you're talking about <laughs> color data that you can't actually see until you try to like pull it within the monitor's range. That's 68 billion colors. Yeah, um, I think there are, but you're talking about the, the high-end color grading uh, reference monitors and stuff yeah. like that. That's got 12G. And right, that's not like consumer no, monitors you're, you're in not find, living rooms You might not find a 10-bit monitor at Best Buy or you know Newegg or something. But. Yeah, so the, the thing that, that uh, always you know brings it uh into clarity for me is is when you're looking at like a 12-bit image and you see some bright brights and some dark darks and the whites are very white and you start 
darkening it you bring the highlights down and you bring the highlights down and the white stays white until you just keep dialing the highlights down and down and down and down and down until you come down within the 8-bit range and suddenly now detail starts coming out of the whites that was just totally clipped off completely blown out uh, by your monitor yeah so that's what something that you just want to watch out for as you're transcoding uh, if you do have a 12-bit file if you're lucky enough to be working with a 12-bit file transcoding into an 8-bit file and saying yeah, it looks about the same um, is really taking away a lot of the flexibility which you could have available to you